All right, Mr. Anius got us a new every isekai and fantasy anime. I think fantasy should be catered towards a native isekai. Anyway, new isekai fantasy anime coming out next season. Let's see what he has to say. This coming spring is gonna be crazy. Not because anything new has caught my eye like free run or solo leveling, but rather because the number of peak anime returning is unbelievable. And this is maybe specific to me, but this coming spring 2024, it feels like everything I've done in my YouTube channel is like built up to this moment, straight up. Because every anime that we community, we community polled, Mahoka, Irregular Magical High School, right? Akonosuba, Data Live, uh, fucking, what, what other? Mushoku Tensei. Um, technically, what's it called? There's another, uh, what's it called? There's, there's, uh, fuck it. There, what, what other, what other animes are there? What other animes are there? Fuck, I'm, I'm, I'm tripping now. But there's like seven, there's like eight, perhaps like nine different fucking animes that's getting all sequels that didn't even fucking air recently. That's just been all just pulled animes from the past. It's kind of crazy. Never Slime, that's right. Sequels come out at the same time. Konosuba, yeah. It's like Misfit Demon King Academy. To release their best anime together for some reason. Without me even including the new Demon Slayer or My Hero Season 7. There's still eight other amazing anime that are returning next month. Enough that there might not even be enough time to check out the 10 other isekai and fantasy coming out along with it. Just and that's the thing. To anyway. See, I already know that shows like Mushoku Tensei, Konosuba, Data Live, Mahoka, Slime, they're all going to do well because these are community series. But what Mr. Yanni just said, random fucking power fantasy and isekai that you've never fucking heard about. For example, Instant Death, Wrong Way to Use Healing Magic, Level 99 Villainous. I had no fucking idea what those were about. They popped off in my channel, so it's like, we're going to be eating good this coming month, man. Anyway, though, here's a breakdown of every isekai and fantasy coming okay. out next season. Oh, who's First, that? There's a pretty cool sci-fi... Raid Shadow Legends? Very User, you, you, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends. If I didn't think you. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. Does the three -body problem do that? Mixed with Is he still ad? He's still doing ads. Fantasy yes. Ad, ad, ad. That for the I should get a web novel sponsorship. I should reach out to them. I'm gonna email them. One, any news always plugs them, man. There's gotta be a reason. Three body problem. Starting with the sequels. I'm sure it's no surprise that both Mushoku Tensei and Tensida are returning. I've okay. talked about both in numerous videos before, and they're the series I'm planning to cover all the way to August. So if you want to see cut content and more videos on either... Oh, we gonna be fucking farming. We got so many anime news, just like a backlog of so many slime videos, Mushoku Tensei videos, bro. It's gonna be fucking crazy, man. Then feel free to subscribe since that's gonna be my entire existence for a bit. As for what these two will cover, Mushoku Tensei is picking things up right after Rudy's proposal to Sylphie. Okay. It'll be a bit more of that slice of life romance we got in the first part, but end on something a lot more exciting towards the end of it. Turning point? Tensei turning point coming? Third season, 24 episodes. You know what the best part about Mushoku Tensei coming up gonna be? It's gonna be... Oh, and Chibi's gonna be very happy about this. Chibi's gonna be very happy about this. And it's gonna be all the fucking freaks on Twitter just like screaming. About cancel Mushoku Tensei! They had racism, child slavery, underage drinking, Rudy's a pedo! And oh, we gonna just be farming all the hate videos. Yup, yup. Mushoku Tensei is picking things up right after Rudy's proposal. We're gonna get canceled for the seventh It'll time. Be a bit more of that slice of life romance we got in the first part, but end on something a lot more exciting towards the end of it. This is a really cool point in the trailer where Rudy was actually fighting, you know, the other, you know, uh, Grey Rat. With a sword, because he's a magician, but he's been training with a sword for it. It's like, holy shit, for the first time, we're getting an actual fucking, you know, sword duel. Exciting towards the end of it. Yeah, his name was Luke, Tensei right? Is doing its third season, 24 episodes straight. So unlike Mushoku Tensei and its split core two-part season. 24 episodes straight? We'll be what in the fuck is bro's hair? What? Do you see this shit? This is the this is the church, right? This is Hinata's gang, right? I'm actually I'm not really sure. Are these the Imperial Knights or like did didn't they talk about some kind of like holy knights or some shit? But this guy's hair is fucking crazy, right? From April to August we'll be getting nonstop. <laughs> all right, all right. The first bit will cover the hype showdown between Rimuru and Hinata. Round and two. After that, an event known as the Founding Festival. It's two great arcs that are definitely worth looking forward to. Okay. One that might need a recap since it has been two and a half years since the last season. Check out my playlist. We've been casting up on Slime over the last month. 
Next is Konosuba Season 3, and aside from the usual antics we're used to with Kazuma and his party, the Lolly arc we're season. heading into is Lolly the Kazuma's little sister arc. Not his actual sister or anyone related to him, but a younger princess who he starts treating as if she was his younger sister. Okay. This gets him invited into the royal castle, and that in turn allows him to start living like royalty. This is I great. This quality of life that I'm sure you Again, his luck is fucking insane, bro. He keeps saying how unlucky he is. No, even just like natural stats in this fucking, you know, in, in this show, his luck is maxed out, right? He is so fucking lucky. Bro is literally getting a royal princess as his like little sister and he can fucking fuck around in the mansion like a king's palace, bro. You don't need me to tell you how much he enjoys. All now, the girls love him too, apparently. Thing to note about the production of this season is that Studio Drive will be doing it instead of Studio Dean. Uh oh. Well, the trailer looked pretty good. I couldn't even tell the difference in animation. Drive was responsible for the spinoff last year, so if you enjoyed the oh. quality of that, then. That oh yeah, yeah. We watched the Konosuba spinoff, the Mega Man spinoff. That was perfectly fine. I didn't even notice that it was a different studio. That's pretty much what. Yeah, you that's good. We're good. Minutes. We're chilling. Yeah. Moving on to the fantasy that Ma, part Isekai. Okay, let's First, go. First, we have the second part to the misfit of Demon King's Academy's second season. Oh, God, this the fucking show. We literally had to restart from the seventh episode, but... Yeah, remember that fucking hiatus, dude? We were, like, catching up, like, last year, right? Last year. No, this is, like, 2022 December. We started, you know, Misfit of Demon King Academy season one. Because I was like, oh, shit. Season two is going to show up in January 2023. And it did for, like, six episodes. And then for six months, they're like, yeah. Hiatus. It came back. It came back. It is now finally being concluded with what I hope is no delays this time. Part one just finished the Great Spirit arc. Oh my God, he's right. This this is core two. We haven't even finished season two. This season two has been happening for fucking two years. This is insane. <laughs> this split core season two has been going on for like this is the second year in the fucking making right now. Part, so part two, I would Holy suspect, shit. is the selection trial arc. It's a two-part story in which one has the Demon and Hero Academies teaming up, while the other is Anos fighting in a trial to become the Proxy of the Gods. Proxy of the He's Gods? He's chosen as one of the eight representatives worthy of the position, so the last one standing will of course be the most worthy. I thought we had a little sister or some shit too, bro, the memories he lost. It's an interesting sounding arc that I hope is just more of what we all liked from the first season. You know. Anos flexing on literally everyone. Yes, I can't wait for the lines where he says, Oh, just because you killed me, did you think I would die? I can't wait for those one-liners to come back. A more sci-fi based fantasy Mahoka! along with it is Mahoka Season 3, which will finally continue the main story for it. Everybody's favorite anime Jesus Christ Big Brother is coming back. Season 2 was a bit quote unquote mid. But I hear that it was necessary and it was like a setup arc, right? I think that compared to season one, which is like 26 episodes of like fully fleshed out arcs, that was so fucking good. Season one, I think Mahoka might be one of the best season one of animes that I've ever fucking seen. There's some slow parts, but overall, it's fucking great. Season two, we only had like 13 or 12 episodes to work with and they dragged on for too long. But I think these were kind of like the low points where it's necessary to set up these different things to happen. So I'm hoping season three, we're going to come back strong. The last core installment was the visitor arc from... I did realize that too. He literally timestamped this section of Mahoka, Jesus Kun returns. And he is anime Jesus Christ, dude. 2020, but it was in between all that that we got a movie, a prequel, and a spinoff. Should we watch the movie? Not the, uh, we already watched the Okinawa, or was it the Osaka one? I forget. The, 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 the childhood one, right? The childhood past one. We've already seen that movie, but there's the stars movie that we haven't seen. I think that revolves around Lena because people lost interest in season two. Uh, depending on if people actually want to watch it, we might check this out before the season starts. The spinoff was just a retelling of season one from the perspective of a different character. She's a cool best girl. Flashback taking place during We've seen that. And Miyuki's middle school in years, the stars so movie. It will be a direct continuation to the visitor arc. Should we watch this? We probably need to watch it then, right? I don't know. I wouldn't deem the spinoff or prequel as necessary, but if you want the full experience of what Mahoka has to offer, then at the very least you should try and watch the prequel. The end of the movie is likely where season 3 will start from, so okay. that's something you should probably watch too. Okay, if the end of the movie is the beginning of season 3, I think that we should probably watch it. I'm not sure if I'm going to put it on YouTube, but we'll watch it on stream and put it on Patreon. Yeah. As for what season 3 will cover, I suspect it'll bring us to the Double Seven Steeplechase and Ancient City arc. Mayumi. A series of events that starts with Tatsuya's second year, but will also bring us to another one of those iconic Night Schools competitions. Perhaps we Tournament might be arc! able to see more of this. Tournament arc!
These oh. next two I'm not quite familiar with, but... Dude, this fucking... Dude, the Crimson Prince versus Oni summer moment. Dude, this is actually one of the most peak endings to a tournament, right? I can't say the whole tournament was peak, but this fight, the way it concluded, it was the coolest shit. Holy shit. Everything I could possibly want of a conclusion of like a battle, like a hype battle in a tournament. This is fucking it, dude. This is it. All right, we're back with Data Live now. Okay, this here we go. Two I'm not quite familiar with, but I know Kurumi oh? stands are rejoicing for Data Lives. <laughs> Wait, did he just butcher Kurumi and Data Live pronunciation? These next two I'm not. I'm gonna increase the volume for this. I'm gonna increase the volume for this. Listen, listen. Quite familiar with, but I know Kurumi stands are rejoicing for Data Live season five. Uh, Kurumi? Ku Kurami? Next two I'm not quite familiar with, but I know Kurumi stands. No, he said Kurumi. He said Kurumi. It just wasn't Kurumi. It was Kurumi. That's fine. But they did alive. So rejoicing for Data Live Season 5. Ah, our favorite anime in this channel, ladies and gentlemen. Data Live Season 5 is coming back. Let's fucking go. A 12th episode installment that could very well be the last season for it. Okay, 12 episodes. After being tossed around from studio to studio, it looks like Geek Toys is committing to finally finishing it up for us. Okay. Unfortunately, that'll probably come with the jarring CGI Season 4's fights we're plagued with, but I suppose that's better than waiting 5 plus years for it. The other... Yeah, yeah. Uh, the CGI fights are kind of jarring for sure, right? Fuck, I just wish that we could go back to the original Season 1 animation, but, you know, it is what it is, man. ...series is Black Butler's public school arc, and this too is fine. Black Butler! This is the character I based my Niji Sanji VTuber auditions off of. ...really returning after seven long years <laughs> ...Milady. <laughs> Combine this with the fact Spice and Wolf's remake... I don't think we're watching these, right? Two, ...and we pretty much have the best of 2008 all over again. It's like, we can't start, like, we can't start Black Clover. I mean, sorry, not Black Clover. I wish we could start watching Black Clover. Black Butler, there's so many seasons, right? This is such a matured anime, so it's like, we can't watch this, right? Any case, Black Butler will be covering the seventh arc of the series, and seventh unlike arc. A1 Pictures, who was the studio responsible for it before, this time it'll be Studio Cloverworks. Okay. This, of course, means much of the staff will be different, but fortunately, the core cast has remained the same. Now, it's hard to believe Spice and Wolf is returning. Listen, Spice and Wolf is a legendary show that name is known everywhere, right? I haven't watched it yet, but like, there is like, I have zero confidence that if I make a Spice and Wolf reaction, that my community would be willing to watch this shit. You guys are a bunch of fucking brain rotted isekai and, fan and power fantasy enjoyers. Like, no one's gonna give a fuck about Spice and Wolf in my channel. I might just watch it by myself. Too, but here we are in a season where Hollow has been remade right in front of us. I can't say Studio Passion is the one I would have wanted for it, but I suppose any adaptation is better than none. I mean, who knows? Maybe this studio will adapt the series further than the last one did. Animation aside though, with director Takahashi CGI. returning as the man in charge, I imagine the show will be in good hands since he was responsible for the last one. Combine this with Kevin Pankin doing the OST, and I already know- We do know Kevin Pankin. Hey, what did he do? He did the Tower of God soundtrack, Made in Abyss soundtrack, there's some other ones. The Kevin Pink and soundtracks are fucking goaded. Regardless of what's on screen, I'm gonna be fully immersed with it. The voice actors are all the same as well, so I'm honestly cautiously optimistic with what to expect for this. There's been no confirmation as to how many episodes and how long it'll be airing for, but we can only hope we get as many as the original did. Which is? Either way, I'm just excited to see Lawrence and Hollow talk about economics again. With that being all the returning isekai and fantasy, okay, new now ones we can now. finally talk about the new ones. Here we go. There's not really too many I would say I'm personally looking for. Uh, reincarnate as the seventh prince seems to be the one that people are very excited about, right? Or to, but perhaps some might appeal to you. That said, first we have chilling in another world with my level two super cheat powers and- That sounds right up her fucking alley. This sounds exactly what would do well in my channel? Chilling in another world with level 2 super cheap power. Yes, remember that anime? What was it? I got a cheat skill in another world? Yo, this is it. This, this is it. This is it. This is the standard story yep. where the summoned hero is abandoned yep. by the kingdom that summoned him. Oh, I can't His wait. His were too weak to be deemed usable. So yeah, just but he like got a special skill, him, right? He's exiled for being useless. Perfect. Revenge story in the making. Then, just as you'd expect, 
It's yeah. once he hits level 2 that that's when he becomes OP. Okay. Using his newfound powers to defeat every enemy he comes across, then for some reason has them live with him in a series of short... Harem. So, weak guy gets casted out, actually is OP, becomes OP, realizes powers, Harem forms, revenge story. Yup! Check marks every fucking shitty isekai cliche. This is peak six maybe a seven out of ten show that we could watch yep 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 a revolving door of side characters oh oh i see a revolving door all right okay yep yep the plot isn't so much a power fantasy with a hardcore adventure but is instead just a chill slice of life with a bit of romance That may kill the reactions, but we'll let it's it cook. It's a series I'm curious to see if we'll, we'll, we'll let it can cook. turn into something better than what the source material lets on for it. Next, we have Tensei Kizuku, which... As a reincarnated aristocrat, I'll use my appraisal skills to rise in the world. Okay, there's another shitty isekai that we could possibly watch together. So appraisal skills to rise in the world, all right? It's pretty much a combination of Tensei Oji and Realist Hero. I... This is the first anime that I ever dropped live. We have Tensei Kizuku, which wait, is wait, pretty wait. much a combination of Tensei Oji. This show, in my old channel, my first channel, not this current channel, my first channel that I deleted because of copyright, I used to watch this shit. It actually did pretty well in terms of viewership, but I think around episode five or six, I started to realize that the main character actually wasn't smart. It's just that every character around them is retarded, and the main character is the only one that's possible of logical thinking. So the show just treated the audience, the, the viewers, like they were so stupid. Like, this is not a big brain show. Classroom the Elite is a big brain show. I feel like I am compelled by the main character doing all these five-dimensional chess moves that I could never predict. This fucking show, everyone else is literally has like our monkeys. And it's carried by this girl here, Ninim. I only watched it for Ninim. And then after that, I literally, during the live reaction, I said, I can't fucking do it anymore. I'm fucking quitting. I dropped it. I posted that shit on YouTube. It got the most views I've ever fucking made. She and Realist Hero. It's an isekai where the protagonist's main power is his appraisal skill, and okay. as such, we'll use it to recruit a very useful cast of characters. Okay. Since he can see any person's current strength and potential, he can basically determine who's best at what, and that in turn makes planning for war a whole lot easier. Why would they listen to him? I guess because he's like royalty? He'll recruit what's pretty much the Avengers, then use them to stabilize his nation and secure his borders. It could be I interesting can't say to it's watch. Anything we haven't seen before, but from the trailers alone, it does look like Studio Mother might be able to make a decent adaptation out of this. Listen, we're not trying to look for something we've never seen before, okay? That's the exact opposite, okay? These random shitty isekais, we're trying to find shit that we've kind of seen before. It's just a little bit different twist, right? Because these are our bread and butter. Shitty 6 out of 10, you know, anime, isekai, power fantasy that we can just watch and laugh and kind of have fun with. Now, the last isekai before we get to the straight up fantasy is the new gate and its hybrid approach to new power. New gate? Base. What I mean is that it's kind of like a weird mix between Overlord and SAO. Oh? SAO because the story begins with our protagonist trapped in an online life or death game, then <gasps> Link start! after he beats said game, he wakes up in the game's world for real. It's okay. 500 years later, and he's the only player who didn't escape after beating it. This could be interesting. Having been the one who beat the final boss, though, his power is at a level that makes him a literal- it, it, Does this count as sword art offline? Because, like, he's the only one in the game anymore, right? Is, is this Sword Art Offline then? Roll God amongst these NPCs now turned sentient. So it is! The NPCs like are turning sentient! Kirito was isekai into the world of Aincrad for real. Okay. Now, those are the only three we have for isekai, but there is one reincarnation. Seventh Prince. An anime called I Was Reincarnated as the Seventh Prince, so I took my time perfecting my magical ability. I can't believe that's an actual fucking title. Like they called I was reincarnated as the seventh prince, so I took my time perfecting my magical ability. <laughs> These titles are just getting so fucking long. And the worst part, like for you guys, it doesn't really matter, right? At, at the most, you'll have to type a little bit more on the YouTube search engine or Google, you know, whenever you want to find shit about that. For me, when I make these titles on YouTube, like, I only have a set amount of characters that I'm allowed to use. So sometimes, like, I, I, I need the title description, right? I need something to say about the anime title, but then if the anime title is fucking longer than I can fucking put in, it's like, fuck, what am I doing, bro? It's a fairly straightforward fantasy involving a sorcerer reincarnated as a prince, and the okay. whole plot is the prince using his second life to become better at magic. 
In his past life, he wasn't satisfied with the level of power he had, but in this new one now, he's able to master as many magics as possible. Wow. This in turn results in him becoming quite the OP individual, and that, as you'd expect, makes every conflict have the exact same outcome. I just feel like this show quite the OP individual is like a... I just feel like... makes every conflict well, have the exact same outcome. I just feel like this show is like for lollicons, but like... Instead of a girl lolly, it's like a boy lolly, which is a Shota. So this is like Shotokan anime, right? I think that's... Like the designs, the character designs, they're beautiful, right? They're very attractive. The models are... The colors are good. They're vibrant. They're shiny. Everything looks good. But then the main character is like a fucking nine-year-old boy. And I feel like this anime is straight up just... It's a Shota bait, you know what I mean? Same outcome. So all in all, it's a generic power fantasy centered around magic. Perfect. That's all I need. That's all I could fucking ask for from these animes. Your typical isekai plot, just in a slightly different setting. Good. Give me the some shitty isekai. The other anime is Remonster. And oh, this goblin! Is a standard fantasy RPG in which the human finds himself reincarnated as a goblin now. Yeah, goblin anime. This means he has to adapt to the harsh life being a monster comes with, but at the same time, it allows him to get stronger since gaining... Does this count as Kyoya from, you know, uh, So I'm a Spider, So What? I I is this basically Kyoya's backstory? Wasn't he a fucking goblin or some shit? XP is possible now. It suits well for his cool tactical mindset and is pretty much the classic level up anime but from the monster's perspective. It's a slight change that could very well make this interesting, but for now I'm just getting Rimuru if he was a goblin vibes. Imagine if Gopta had a fucking isekai anime. Bro, I'm just saying, I think he's the true leader, bro. <laughs> Next Let's go, Captain of Goblin Memories. Riders! This is one of two fantasy romances we'll be getting this season. This one seems a bit more serious in nature, since the elements it mm. deals with aren't the typical light-hearted daily adventure stuff we usually see. No. This is actually a large, overarching plot centering around an unlikely relationship and the development of said relationship. Mm. There's the prince who's cursed to never have a wife, then there's the witch he meets that he hopes can break that curse. I bet this has a pretty good story. In fact, this probably has a better story than all the shitty isekais that we kind of went over. But I feel like because it's not a shitty isekai or a power fantasy, like the, not like the traditional ones that we watch, it's going to do bad on YouTube, you know what I mean? One is a strong, competent knight who's very skilled with the sword, while the other is the strongest witch ever thought to have existed. Okay. They both meet under unexpected circumstances, and it's that meeting that makes the prince think, why not just make this witch his wife? This leads the two to live Fantasy together in romance, castle, huh? and it's as they do that we get to learn more about their pasts. The dark secrets both have come to live with, and how it is those secrets affect their blossoming relationship. Like, again, I bet you, like, this actually has a better story than any of the fucking shitty isekai we just watched, but, like, again, in, 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 the, in the game of the YouTube algorithm and the anime reaction space, you gotta fucking give your audience what they want, and I don't think that my audience necessarily gives a fuck about fantasy romance, you know, but I, I, this is the witch's armpits. The witch's armpits are nice. So if you're looking for a complementary dynamic between two strong characters, then Unnamed Memory might be worth checking out for you. You know what the funny thing is? It's like the better, the, the, like, the better the anime is objectively, the worse it performs on my channel. What does that say about you guys, huh? What the fuck are you making me watch? I got a cheat skill in another fucking world. What the fuck are you guys just watching all the eating this shit up like um, I hit level 2 and I got an OP cheat skill and now I'm gonna get all the waifus in the world. Like these are fucking terrible fucking animes. Let's get real, right? They're terrible. Like the story is trash. But there's some hype fucking moments, right? And people love that isekai element. This, I unnamed memory. I bet you it's like a peak fucking, you know, fucking fantasy romance, you know, story that probably goes higher than 8. But it's like... Y'all don't want to watch anything if it's higher than a fucking 8. It's got to be like, maximum it's got to be 7, right? Anything below 7, it'll perform well on my channel. <laughs> There's a few intriguing plot elements that work to its advantage as well. We just got to hope that the anime can get to them. The other fantasy romance is an Archdemon's is Dilemma, and this is about a source. This one we'll actually watch. This one, we did a trailer on this, right? This is the acoustic demon lord that buys an elf slave and rises her up. I, I think this will be actually fun to watch. It's like a funny rom-com, right? Or who falls in love yeah. with an elf and slave girl he comes Okay, across. okay, okay. The sorcerer is socially inept and unable to express how he feels, while the elf girl has been through trauma and is simply unable to feel. This makes both characters incapable of interacting properly, and it's that dynamic that's pretty much the focal point for this. So two socially adept acoustic motherfuckers in romance. That's pretty much it, huh? Honestly, 
probably would be a very unique twist to like a, a rom-com series and it looks pretty good i mean we watched the trailer people seem to love it we're gonna check this out it's a slow build-up of how the two events the spectrum riz stage. man it's that fucking spectrum riz standard world of fantasy next we have the banished former hero lives as he pleases this sounds good the title alone, the banished former hero lives as he pleases, sounds like a shitty isekai that people would watch for us. And this is about as simple as the title makes it out to be. The former hero reincarnates in order to avoid all the struggles of being a hero, but it's when okay. he's exiled for being useless that he immediately starts doing things that a hero would do. It is technically him living the way that he wants. Did we not watch a trailer of this? I think we didn't. It performed really bad, and people are saying... Bro, I know that like I know that we're all about shitty isekais, but this one is like shittier than shit. Is it that bad? It's too, but unlike how you'd expect, all that entails is pretty much the same stuff he was doing before. So as far as basic power fantasies go, it yeah. seems this is about as basic as they get. It like a solid like 5.4 out of 10, maximum 6. I see potential. I, I see potential of it doing well on my channel because it's so fucking bad. It's the generic. hero fighting monsters and saving the princess. Hmm. The only difference is he's doing it on his own time. Something that looks a bit more interesting is Studio Liden Film's adaptation of God's Game We Play. Oh, it's the... Uh, notice how he played No Game No Life? This is the... um, it's Not the Liar Liar clone, but it's the mind game. You know, the one that kind of looked like the Chivalry of a Failed Knight poster. You know, a red-haired girl, black-haired boy, you know? A no-game-no-life type series in which humanity's best gamer must represent yeah. them in a series yeah. of brain games crafted by the gods. It better be good. Like, I enjoy these mind game animes, like Classroom of the Elite, but Liar Liar, I just couldn't feel it. I didn't finish it. I think I watched up to, like, episode 3 or 4 or 5, and at a certain point, it was like, all the big brain plays was, like, the maids taking over the enemy's cell phone and just, like, hacking it. I was like... The mage are nice, but it's like, oh. I don't know. Maybe this is as good as New Game, No Game, No Life, man. Not once has humanity ever been able to win them, but perhaps this time humanity's representative can. Humanity. It's the series I'm personally looking forward to the most. What was the word that they use in No Game, No Life? It's like, humanity. Humanity, that's right. Since I'm always a sucker for anime where the protagonist outsmarts their opponent. I'm also excited to see all the different types of games they'll play. Okay. Now, last but not least is the reverse isekai of Henjin no Salad. Salad Bowl of Eccentrics. A comedic fantasy about a detective who starts living with a magical princess from another world. The princess slowly starts to get used to her new life in Japan, and okay. it's the dynamic between her and her roommate that will probably be this series' focal point. Hmm. It'd be a chill anime that we could check out. I'm not too sure. There's not much else to say other than that, but I can imagine a few interesting scenarios revolving around a medieval princess getting accustomed to modern day society. Yeah, kind of just like, uh, what's what's the word? You know, uh, the devil's a part-timer kind of vibes, right? It's like, oh, the demon lords show up to Japan and they gotta fucking work at McDonald's now. And it's like, shit, can I, have a, can I take your fucking order? But yeah, that's pretty much every isekai and fantasy. Show the bait. Show the bait. Look at this shit. Modern day society. Look at this shit. But yeah. That's pretty much every isekai. Bro is licking his fucking finger that has no flesh on it. And don't tell me that this Shoda is like a fucking like a middle-aged man that got reincarnated as a Shoda. Please don't do that. Is it gonna be some fucking balding fat fucker in his 50s that's fucking getting reincarnated as a Shoda? Please don't do this to me. Kind fantasy coming out next season. If any of them caught your eye, then be sure to let me know down in the comments which of them you'll be watching this season. Alright. Before I go. Check his merch! Guys, please go give Mr. Annie News a subscription on his channel. Like his videos if you did. He always gives us this great breakdowns of missed light novel content and sometimes to prepare us for the new season. And goddamn, again, I was kind of I was memeing around in the last half of the Isekai shows, but dude, we got Slime, we have Konosuba, we have fucking Mahoka, we have Misfit Demon King Academy, we have Data Live, we have so many shows that's coming by Mushoku Tensei. Every sequel is coming back this coming April, bro. And goddamn, we'll be there to cover it, okay?